finished this last night, but what did you think about Mitch Garver's throwing last night? I tell you what, that's been a real nice, I uh, hate to use the word surprise, but uh, you know, to look at his progress this spring, uh, uh, it's really come along uh, very nicely. He caught seven innings last night, uh, made the good throw there. Um, told Bobby Wilson uh, his arm's really feeling good, and uh, so that's good news for us and good news for him. Uh, you know, you always said, Concern, you know, about any setbacks, but uh, really have stayed away uh, from those with him, and it's just gotten better and better. Now, now we're at a point where he's going every other day and getting stretched out, and so uh, you know he's really, really come along like we were hoping. Could you are you feeling more comfortable that he could catch twice a week? Oh yeah. Well, uh, He's doing that now. He's doing more than that now. Yeah. So, um, right now, there's no doubt in my mind he, he could do that, handle it. And uh, I think he, he certainly feels like that. And so, you know, we're, we're good to go with him. You know, that throw yesterday was well to the first base side of the second here in recent years. We've seen a lot more of that from catchers throwing off the bag. We're in the past, everybody was kind of trying to throw to the bag. And for us, we would call a throw to the bag a good throw. That was a great throw. That was a, it seems to me like now throwing the ball four to five feet away from the bag toward the runner is the better throw. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I, I think you, you see why, or you saw why last night, right. you know. You know, any kind of tag on him, well, you're going to uh, tag him before he gets to the bag. Sometimes I I don't think a lot of those are intentional. You know, it's a natural place where it normally goes, you know, because you may open up a little bit, whatever. But a lot of it is intentional now because that's, that's where you want it, on that side of the bag. And uh, uh, so, really, you know, he can answer that better than me. I, and, uh, but it was... You know, a perfect throw. I don't know if, if it was on the bag, if he he would have been out, to be honest. So, are you going to come up with an excuse not to go tomorrow and show the Angels manager the same disrespect? <laughs> yeah, I, I got on him already. Yeah, How I, I, exactly did you get on him? I, I saw him at a dinner. There's about nine of us at the dinner, so. Uh, so, I. I ribbed him pretty good about it, you know. It, uh, he took it well, yeah. But no, I, I'm going tomorrow. In fact, we're going to work out there. Um, yeah, we're getting a field, so uh, Nev got us a uh, field uh, as long as we want tomorrow morning. So uh, some some of the guys will be here working out, but a lot of them will just go right there and work out. What's your What's your best Nev story? Well, I got a mic in front of me right now. That's mm -hmm. stopping. That's stopping the best nav story. Mm -hmm. What's your best publishable nav story? Uh, gosh, I'd have to think on it. You know, probably it's the last game that I had him. You know, he, he really. He wanted to stay, and you know we had a chance to make a trade, and and he says, you know, I'll do anything, and so, you know, I said, I right, I'm going to catch you tomorrow, you know, to add value uh, to him, to our club, and uh, <laughs> so he uh, he catches that day, and and he has been catching a little bit, but not a lot, and it was one of the worst catching efforts I've ever seen. <laughs> And I think he knew it, and he, in his way, he says, i got to get out of here somehow. So he just jumped on the umpire, got thrown out of the game like the third inning, and that, that was it. And, and uh, I said, you know, he's pretty smart. He knew it wasn't going too well back there. He says, I'm just making things worse for me. So he gets, th he gets thrown out of the game, and I think a day or two later he was traded. Coach, the – 
the crackdown on substances, if I'm not mistaken, the checks came about after you uh, left right. the Giants. Right. So I, I saw that they're doubling down on that or going to put even more emphasis. I, what are your thoughts on all of that stuff and the way they're... Yeah, where they saw, you know, you know where the numbers were creep, creeping back up, you know, with the spin rate and those things. So we just get the memo. They're going to be checked more often, more randomly. Uh, uh, so the you know, pitchers, we've told them. And uh, so uh, it's just going to be uh, an adjustment for these pitchers, I guess, knowing that, the, you know, they're, they're going to get checked more fr- uh, frequently. And in more places, and hey, no big deal to me. It, hey, it's, it's what uh, it's what every club is having done to them. So, um, you know, in our game today, because of technology, they can they can see things, and uh, sometimes they may not buy into you know hard work or adjustment in your uh, delivery, whatever. So you know, they're just going to make sure that things are done right. You were catching. Did you ever catch a pitch and throw it back and look at your hand and think, "What the heck is that?" You get a lot of funky stuff back in the day. Before oh yeah, yeah. Well, there's no getting around it. I, I was guilty on a couple of things myself. You know, <laughs> help, trying to help the pitcher out. What What do you remember about Corey Seager when you were with the Giants in his first year with the Dodgers? I mean. As much as anything, just what a, you know, what a dangerous hitter he was. You know, I mean, aggressive hitter. Everybody knows it, but uh, um, you know he, how uh, how well he he adjusts too. You know, you think well, you can attack him in different ways, but uh, you know, he has a very good feel of what the pitcher's trying to do to him, but uh, also he played a, a very nice short, too. You know, here's a big guy that uh, did a great job at short, but uh, he was just a tough out in that lineup, and he, he was dangerous, and uh, you hated seeing seeing him up there with men on base. When you said last night he's in a good space, what do you mean? You see his timing, how he's swinging the bat. That's what I mean. With, with you know, spring training, you're trying to get to where – you know, you're ready for the season uh, uh, with your timing, uh, you know, how you're playing. And um, I think that's where he's at right now. You know, we still have some games to go, but, uh, you know, you can see uh, how well he's seeing the ball and uh, swings he's getting off. Uh, you know, he's play at shortstop. Uh, that's why I said that right now he's in a, a, a good, good spot. <coughs> You're getting uh, a lot of looks at Justin Foskey. What stands out about him? The bat. I mean, you start with the bat. This guy, he comes in, hits a home run the first two games, and uh, he's continued to do that. He's swinging the bat well down there. So, you know, we're trying to get, you know, and we told a lot of these guys we try to get them back as much as we can to give them even more experience, more time, and, you know, where he's at in his career, he's, he's knocking on the door. And so, you know, this is good to get him over here and get him as many at bats as we can to, you know, again, I talk about a lot, get that sense of belonging that you can play here, hit here, and uh, he certainly has that. Um, you know, and he's working on his defense down there in second, and uh, I think he's going to play some first. And uh, But um, the, the bat works. I mean, it's, he's, and you know what, he, he's not a chaser, you know. It, Here's a guy with power and drives the ball, uh, but he's got pretty good discipline up there too. Coach Adolis has had a lot of success being a free swinger. Um, I know it's really tough, especially with swing decisions in spring training. To I don't know to to read into it, but I mean, has that been a point of emphasis? Because his I mean I don't have numbers. It would appear to me his chase rate is way below what we've seen the last couple of years and is it back the at bats and the decisions he's making yeah time? I couldn't agree more you know I didn't know Dolly until uh, I came here this spring and uh, uh, I saw him chase one slider that you know 
might have been a pitch that he had chased a lot, but uh, he's shown very good discipline at the plate, uh, and so I haven't seen it. So this is why I said I like to form my own uh, evaluation uh, until I see these guys. And I've seen a guy that is not what you might read in the report or his evaluation. He has really thrown out good at bats, and I couldn't agree more that uh, you know his discipline at the plate has really uh, been been very good here uh, this spring. So no, that's that's what's impressed me about him. And really, the the lineup. I I mean, you go down our lineup. They they we had good at bats last night. The last night against Clayton, uh, these guys are doing a good job of, you know, getting a good pitch to hit. Speaking of play discipline, Bubba Thompson, I think, took a full count walk last night, which is not something he often does. What are you seeing from him? Yeah, you know, with Bubba, uh, you know, he hasn't gone to his uh, big part of his game yet enough, probably, uh, you know, because he. He can do some things, uh, you know, bunting and, and, and little things like that. But uh, that, that was big for him. But uh, um, but be honest, you know, we we got to get a little more contact out of Bubba. Um, yesterday or, or his previous start, uh, two strikes, hit the ground ball to short, beat it out. You know, things like that are going to help Bubba. Uh, Bubba, he, uh, you know. In the early part of the spring, he was swinging really well, I thought. I thought he was driving the ball, but, you know, he's gotten a little bit in, in the rut where he's in between. He's not pulling the trigger or he's a little too aggressive. And, uh, and when you get in that mode, sometimes it just takes a bunt hit or something to get you going again. So his timing's been a little bit off uh, lately, but it was good to see him get that walk. Aren't you ready to leave yet? I mean, it, I'm sorry? Know, it's fun. It's really fun to come down the first couple of days, and then you get to a point where maybe guys are, you know, anxious to leave and start playing games for real. Are you, are you there yet? I'm not there yet, to be honest. You know, I still got some things I like to get done before we leave. You know, you, as a manager, you're thinking of all the boxes you got to check off, and uh, still got, you know, a few things. Uh, you know, with nine games left, we talked about it today in our, our meeting this morning. Uh, that we want to get done, and, you know, and obviously we got to get these guys uh, playing every day. So they'll, uh, you'll see the uh, regulars out there the next three days, day off. They'll go three uh, days in a row again. So, you know, we'll get them in that mode. And they they won't be going nine, but you know, just get them used to that. And uh, you know, a couple fundamentals we get to cover. And uh, so, um, but to your point, yeah, it's it's getting close where. Where you you know you're just anxious to get ready to go, and I talked about this earlier in spring training. You know you you start with you're excited to be here, you you know pitchers and catchers, and you can't wait for the position players, and then you can't wait for the games, and once the games start, you can't wait for the season. So it's getting close, but to be honest, I, I'm not quite there yet. Yesterday was my first day to see a game with the pitch clock. Do you feel like it's it's kind of now at this point in camp it's a little bit of old news that guys are adjusting nicely, or is yeah, I, I think they've adjusted really nicely. Uh, but it's it's still, you know, some things uh, that we have to know, uh, especially the pitchers. Uh, but and I say the pitchers, but the hitters too. So you know, it's not quite second nature, but uh, I think they've adjusted well. We're still getting a couple of violations here and there, uh, and I. You know, they'll go down. You're still going to have them, you know, because sometimes you get so focused you forget to look at the clock. Where do you stand on your, you know, your pitchers haven't played around with pitch count. They haven't played around with what? Pitch count. Oh, pitch count. I think you said pitch count. Yeah. Um, no, you play around with pitch count. They play around with pitch count. Yeah, pitch count, yeah. Um, where do you stand on that? On having them use it, uh, we're actually using it on you know on the backfields and stuff. We're we're getting them used to it. Uh, we we we've adjusted our pitch comms and stuff that we want on them. Um, yeah, you can put quite a few things on there. You can put, you know, of course the 
the plays that you want, uh, you know, uh, pickoffs, things like that. Uh, but also, you know, the other part, you know, that's, gosh, I do that every day, don't I? Um, you go, uh, thanks. You know, you go with uh, uh, every pitcher has a, a customized uh, you know, pitch com. So, you know, they're, it's important you get used to it. The last thing you want a pitcher to hear is, you know, pick the third or, you know, he's trying to think which pick off and the clock's going. But the pitcher device, I mean, yeah. have, have those guys, have they played with their, with the pitchers? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I think a couple of them have, yeah. You know, how do you feel about that? Um, I like it. I like it, you know. You know, some pitchers, you know, they're they're going to call their own games. I think they're comfortable doing it. Some aren't, you know. But nobody doesn't. I don't think any of your guys have used it in the game. No, no. I'm sorry. I I, I, I got you now. That's all right. You customize the voice for for people too. You have like Samuel L. Jackson. On there? <laughs> uh, I don't know who we have on there. To be honest. Siri. You don't no, like not Siri. I, Siri and I don't get along. Who would you want on your customized voice? Oh, mine? I don't know. That's a good one. You have Garth singing to you. Garth. Morgan Freeman, he's got a good Sean voice. Would be a good yeah, he would be a good one. It'd be hard to get him on there. but. <laughs> when you were catching, did you have many guys who like to call their own games? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know what we had, uh, you know, when I was catching, to add and subtract, you know, they you'd put a number down, but they would, you know, have ways to, you know, give you what they wanted to throw instead of shaking. Uh, they like doing that, but you don't see that as much anymore. You see some staring, and you know, I'm sure some pitchers have their own little things that you know, tells the catcher he wants a different sign. But uh, yeah, we we did it. I mean, we did a lot. Yeah, I asked DeGrom about that. He, they never added or subtracted when he was with the Mets. He didn't have a wipe system or anything like that. No. They, you know, they felt like they could, they, they were get, you know, just giving away, you know, uh, whether it was off speed or, or, or hard stuff there. But that, uh, I, I didn't feel that way. You know, I, I, I liked it when they did it. It kept it moving, too. That's why a lot of our games were a lot faster back then, you know. Not just with the, the strike zone itself, but the uh, pitchers, you know, calling their pitches. I was sure they would today or prior to this year, I guess it's a lot of mind reading, right? Down to two, no. Down to one, no. Right. You keep playing that game until finally you hit right, the right. Right. Right one, but I guess those guys are just a Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Hey, quiz time. Oh, no. Did you ever manage against anybody who managed you? Yeah, Joe Torrey. Where did Joe Torrey manage? Yeah, only in spring training, but I was with the Mets. Anybody? Well, but he wasn't the manager in '82 when you were with the Mets. Uh, Bamberger, he was there in '81. Right. So, but you know. I so said, Joe, Joe says, you know, I manage Boach. I said, well, Joe, you sent me down. <laughs> <laughs> so that's managing me, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'll think a little bit longer on this. Uh, um, boy, I don't think so. Clearly, it was not that big of a rivalry, Boa. Oh, Bo, I forgot about Bo, yeah. He owned you, too. He did? Yeah. What's owning me? 16 and 10 against you? I don't know how that happened. <laughs> no. I, you know, I totally forgot about Larry. That's my fault. You managed DeRosa, didn't you? I did. Um, no, it's been good. Uh, I, I mean, they're, I mean, they're really good and really face some really good competition. I mean, tonight's going to be, a, I, I mean, it's just exciting. I, I, it's been good for baseball. It has. I mean, you look at the, the crowds that are coming out, so it's, 
and for Mark, uh, you know, I know he's talked about wanting to manage. Uh, he says he's not doing this to, to manage Joe, uh, but he, um, you know, we talked about it in Cabo this off season. I, I was down there with him for a little bit uh, for an uh, event, and uh, he he was just really excited about it. So. He's already said the game is, is starting to slow down for him. You know, the, the uh, exhibition games are pretty fast. and But, you know, it's, you get so many limitations and things. There's only so much you can do. So, you know, yeah, he's pretty much throw out the bats and balls and play the rules. Take the guys out when they need to come out and those things. I wanted to go back to my favorite topic, Nevin, one more time. Um, in all seriousness, did you did he did you guys have any conversations this winter after he got the full time job just about things that would present challenges and how it, did he have any questions for you about growing into the managerial role? Um. Yeah, I mean we we've talked about things. Yeah, I mean even before he started managing, but. Uh, you know, he's got a pretty good feel. He managed in the minor leagues, uh, so uh, you know, I don't. They're not questions like what should I do here or there. Uh, probably more so on Kotze's side, uh, uh, but with Nev, uh, I think uh, his experience is, you know, for managing in the minor leagues, that's invaluable, and uh, so it's uh, it's really benefited him. And he's been coaching a long time, but he you know he's he knows what he's doing over there. And, but we have brought up situations. Yeah, we've talked a lot about it. We'd spent four or five days together in Jackson this winter and and uh, down in Cabo in the same thing, uh, event that DeRosa was in. So we had talks, you know.